the uh, ability of um, CMS to implement changes that have been suggested by their past experience with the shared savings and the Pioneer ACO models to build a yet improved um, um, a model of delivery of care I think will remain to be seen. I actually have much more hope that the private sector is going to going to move this along much more rapidly than than Medicare will because of the ability for the private sector to be uh, more facile in terms of of altering the the care delivery model, the rewards associated with with this delivery model, etc. So the next generation uh, model that's been announced, it's affectionately called 3.0. Um, I, I, I think it has some of the learnings, but I'm not really um, confident that all of the learnings from the Pioneer program, the Shared Savings program, have been incorporated. The, you know, the next generation is a really high intensity risk. There are basically two, two roads you can go down with that, and both of them you have to take the risk. Now, even the risk is capped at, I think, 15%. The problem is you could actually be paying back the government for providing care. And I think that's really, uh, I'm concerned about that. If you look at the Pioneer program, I think there, I think the stats have been that there are sort of in the last 15, maybe two years, sort of 10 practices have dropped out of the Pioneer program. Um, I think that's a problem because I don't think we've taken all the learning that we've had already and really adequately applied it to what we call a next generation or sort of ACO 3.0. The community oncologists and the efforts within community oncology to be consistent with the delivery model that CMS and more specifically CMMI has envisioned for reform in the oncology space I think are to a great extent consistent. So CMMI in the OCM has proposed really an enhanced care delivery model with a reformed reimbursement methodology. And that reformed reimbursement methodology includes a management payment and a, um, and a, and a shared savings component. Now, some have criticized it because they say it hasn't gone far enough, but I think you've got to crawl before you walk, so I think it's unfair. COA has been a leader in the space, the Community Oncology Alliance. U.S. Oncology has done a fair amount of work in this space. And then I think there are some forward-thinking um, uh, academic centers. We have a relationship, for example, with Moffitt Cancer Center that are starting to get comfortable with the idea of looking at uh, the patient experience, looking at shifting the uh, center of that um, um, of that relationship from the provider to the patient and then measuring the impact of that and then getting paid based on that performance. So, so I'm, I'm very bullish on the general concept of the model. I think you can quibble with certain elements of it, but I think a lot of providers uh, who have thought about how care needs to be transformed are quite comfortable with the overarching principles of the CMMI model. At the Community Oncology Alliance, COA, we, about three years ago, we realized that we had to do something different, and that something different was to build a model around the oncology medical home. The oncology medical home is totally patient-centric, and what happened is we got providers together, we got payers together, we got patient groups, we got other advocates together to come together to define measures of quality and value, first of all. We got an implementation team to look at the tools to become an oncology medical home and put that all together and then associate payment reform around that. So rather than sort of taking payment reform like the government did with ACO and said, here it is, it's going to be a shared savings model, we said, we don't know what it's going to be. But what we want to do is we want to have the payment reform uh, literally tied to the processes of the oncology medical home. And the first focus that we always came to was the patient. So we're really gratified now that in the three years that we've been working on this, in a number of different aspects, people have looked and adopted. First of all, practices have become oncology medical homes. Uh, Dr. Barbara McEnany has a large grant from CMMI, and seven practices have transformed themselves and are actually doing some very novel things and providing payment in a very novel way 
around the oncology medical home model. CMMI has come out with something that they don't call the oncology medical home, but it really is the oncology medical home. The problem is that it has some faults associated with it that they have to correct or they are not going to have an implementable model. Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers, she is the fourth highest ranking uh, member on the majority side in the House of Representatives. She's coming out shortly with a bill that is built around the oncology medical home and payment reform. She wants to get it passed. She wants to get it in action. That's all on the Medicare side. If you look at the private pay side, it's been extraordinary. Aetna has an oncology medical home project associated with that. There have been a number of models on the private side that are looking to work with practices to basically become oncology medical homes. And the, the fascinating thing about this and the real exciting thing about it is if you look at community oncology and you compare what community oncology is doing in payment reform, you can't find an area of medicine. I was just actually interviewed recently and I told the reporter and challenged the reporter, find another area of medicine where they're doing more in payment reform and you won't. We had a little side bet. The reporter came back and said, I can. It's community oncology. And that's what's really exciting. That's why at COA, we've all come together, oncologists, uh, practice administrator, nurses, others, all around this idea of what we refer to as community oncology 2.0. In fact, I always try to steal that because I think it's very clever, but Dr. Dave Eagle, who's the past president of COA, I have to give him credit for coming up. It's sort of the, the reboot of the next generation of community oncology, all built around this patient-centric model of uh, the oncology medical home, and then having payment reform associated with that. Community oncology is really at sort of a crossroads now. On, on one hand, we've seen in COA tracks this, we've seen more consolidation into the hospital side, We've seen over the last eight years over 300 clinics that have been closed, a lot in rural areas. That's a big problem in terms of patient access to care. But it's very exciting because we are pioneering um, new payment reform. As I said, we like to refer to it as community oncology 2.0. And I think if we're really going to move forward, both in terms of sort of taking advantage of all the technology revolution, the new drugs, and, and, and the new understanding on the genetic side to treat patients. It's going to be because we are not going to consolidate and collapse the setting, collapse oncology into the more expensive setting, which is the hospital, but we're going to keep that framework of community oncology. And so what I see is building on the oncology medical home now. Adding to that, I don't know what uh, community Oncology 3.0 or 4.0 looks like, but I think what it is is a build on Community Oncology, what we've done with the Oncology Medical Home, innovative models that not just become pilots with private payers with Medicare, that actually become ingrained and the way oncology is paid for, for the better, first of all, always for the patient, and then to keep sort of the practice and the providers viable. I think that's key. Now, obviously, for that to happen as well, too, uh, Medicare, which pays roughly 50 percent has to of, of all cancer care, has to really, uh, we need to change some Medicare policy. So we spend a lot of time at COA working on that, changing Medicare policy, but th at the same time, innovating and going forward in terms of the, the, the reimbursement for care and making that more appropriate so that it's in line with quality and actually trying to control costs.